Central banks know that there are three ways of addressing a very elevated level of inflation. The first one is to increase rates. That is what they're doing right now, but they're still behind the curve. Second is to reduce the quantity of money in the system. That means reducing the balance sheet and reducing the amount of money that is uh, brought into the economy via credit. The third one is government spending, cutting government spending, because governments weigh between 25 to 50 percent of the economy in most developed economies, and therefore it is a very, very powerful inflationary tool when they spend and deficit spend like there's no tomorrow. Hence, uh, when central banks look at ways to cut inflation, they understand that what we need to see is a reduction in aggregate demand. If aggregate demand is going to fall, but it's not going to come from a reduction in government spending, which means that 50% of GDP is not cutting spending, <coughs> think about this. The aggregate demand estimates that everybody uh, are assuming, that people are assuming, the aggregate demand reduction is going to come entirely from the private sector. And if it comes entirely from the private sector, it means a deep recession. Therefore, if central banks start to cut rates because of a reduction in aggregate demand, when the uh, governments of the world are not reducing their expenditure, and they mean about 50% of GDP in developed economies, then what they're actually thinking of is that they will need to cut rates because there is a big, deep recession in the private sector. So careful what you wish for.